it's your birthday. You can literally do whatever you want on your birthday. You could have just not shown up. It's your birthday. I can't judge you for it. Did you want me to sing to you? I mean, if you want to, I wouldn't say no. I don't. I don't at all. I re- and you don't want it either. And I know you don't need that in your life. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> when you when you think about birthdays growing up, was it was it always a big event, or were you one of those kids that didn't really like all the spotlight on your own birthday? Um, I mean, like as a kid, my mom, my mom is like a all out kind of person for everything like holidays, birthdays. So when I was a little kid, I had some like pretty, pretty awesome birthday parties. I mean, you really can't beat the laser quest pizza party. Oh boy. You know, that's on us. That is like the money party. I mean, honestly, as an adult, I would love to have a laser quest pizza party. This is. You there? Greg, you're frozen. You're back, Greg. I'm back. Yeah, everybody was frozen. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your internet cut out basically on your first word about oh. your mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was just saying, I was like, when I was younger, like my mom is a pretty all out on everything for like holidays, birthday parties. So I had some pretty epic birthday parties when I was a kid. And I was just saying like, nothing really beats the laser quest pizza party. Um, to be honest, as a full grown adult, I actually would be stoked to have a laser quest pizza party. <laughs> so, have you not done laser quest since you've been like 10? Oh no, I definitely have multiple times. It's awesome. Isn't it? Well, the only thing is when you go and there's a bunch of kids, you are the most giant, obvious target. I right. remember going, was, <laughs> and you're like, this is the, I can't get it. So you go around like this and you're trying to, you're like, I'm an obvious cheater at this point. <laughs> also like their kids their their cardio is much better than ours yeah, they, they just don't stop I'm like sweating yeah. I'm a little drunk because I'm in there too and it's just <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. 100%. yeah now what what would do you remember your code name everybody had their go-to laser quest code name I was always scorpion oh man okay well first of all I will say that some of my previous ones as an adult are not appropriate so we won't tell those um I'm trying to think what what my go-to was as a kid I mean it was probably like something to do with like snowboarding or ninja turtles or something I don't know (laughs) that makes me have to ask because I the ninja turtles reference in the new song just like knocked me off my tracks I was like that's the coolest thing ever like but since Because usually with that, you associate your first email with something like that too. Were you like snowboard girl 68 at Hotmail? Do you remember your first Hotmail address? Uh, yeah, it's Meekin underscore rides at Hotmail.com. One of my Meekin. friends in high school used to call me Meekin all the time. So yeah. It's you have no idea a, where that came from? I, she just would say it. It was just a weird nickname she made up for me. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's better than my coo underscore foo six at hotmail.com. So just know you <laughs> just know you were flying high with your cool email address. Who is because you can't start the song with Ninja Turtles and not give me your favorite all-time Ninja Turtle. Were you a Donatello person, a Leonardo? I was pro- mostly Michelangelo. Well, so I actually had a pet turtle named Michelangelo when I was little. Um, I think I was pretty partial to Michelangelo. One, because he was like kind of the like fun, like party guy. And also my dad's name is Michael. So I was partial to the name. But I would say like for me, I'm actually somewhere in between Michelangelo and Raphael because I am I am a little bit hot tempered at times for sure, <laughs> but mostly like the fun loving <laughs> Michelangelo. So I always feel like there, there should be a BuzzFeed quiz that says your Ninja Turtle is absolutely representative of your personality because I feel like the Donatello, Donatello kids, they were the smart kids. The Leonardo yep. kids were usually the firstborn. They were the leader kids. Us yep. pizza loving Mikey kids. We were kind of the slackers. We like to have yep. fun, right? <laughs> yeah. So did the turtles thing come, where did the turtles thing spark in the whole inspiration of this song? Did you start thinking of different Megan phases throughout your life and it just sort of came together? Yeah. So, um, I mean, going into the session, I had the, the hook already. I had the idea, you know, it was just, to me, it was just something really simple, but I mean, and, and I've told, I've said this before, like I've, it's always been kind of tough for me to write love songs. Cause they always just come across like cheesy and like not real to like not authentic to me and um 
but you know, again, like with everything I've been through of the past year, like with Mitchell and in our relationship, you know, it's really been put to the test and, um, it came down to like, you know, both of us having to be around each other 24 seven and seeing all sides of each other. You know, I've certainly not been my best self at times over the last year. I've been angry and frustrated and depressed and anxious and all of these things. And so has he. And, you know, we have had different ways of handling it and dealing with it. And when you're stuck in a house with one person all the time, they kind of end up being the target for all your frustration because they're literally the only person around. And, Don't uh, I know it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's why, well, that's why I felt like this, um, this is a good song to put out right now. I think it's probably really relevant for a lot of people. And, you know, unfortunately I know there's been some relationships that have not made it through the pandemic, but I think there's a lot that have. And I think the ones that have would probably say that they're a lot stronger and better off for it as a couple. Um, you know, and, and that was the, the idea behind it was like finding that person or that thing that you, no matter what are never going to give up on. And because for me, like I'm a very passionate person, the falling in love or becoming obsessed with something is like the easy part for me. It's the like sticking with it. That's always been tough. And that's what they so, say. They say falling in love is easy. Staying in love is the hard part. I also just heard that on The Bachelor like two weeks ago. So shout out Bachelor Nation. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and that's the thing is like real, true, lasting love is it, it doesn't just happen. You know, you, you have to work for it. You, you have to put in the effort and you have to put in the energy. And and that's what it comes down to is waking up every day and looking at that person saying, I still choose you and I still yeah. want you and I'm not giving up on this. Even if you're pushing me away or you're angry at me or whatever, I'm not giving up on this because it's still worth it to me. And there's still something here worth saving. And you know, when we went in to write the song, that was sort of the idea behind it. And we were trying to figure out like, okay, how do we land this hook? How do we frame this? And I said, well, why don't we introduce it? Start talking about some of the phases I've been through that didn't last in comparison to it's like, listen, here's all the things I became obsessed with and kind of moved on from. And here's a lot of things I currently still love. And it's like, I could give up any of those things and I would, but you're the yeah. one thing that I, that I wouldn't and that I won't give up on. So I think you're right. There's so many couples right now that are going to resonate so well with this song because we're going through that. We're stuck in a house more than we ever have been before. And it's those little things that you used to be able to ignore. Like for instance, my wife likes to keep all of the cabinet doors open in the kitchen so I can hit my head all the time. Is there something that Mitchell does, just a little thing that becomes a little more aggravating because you're stuck in a house together? The socks. Like why are there socks everywhere? Like freaking everywhere. And the towels, like, why don't you just put the towels in the hamper? And then we can always have clean, fresh folded towels. Like I will wash them and fold them. I'll even put them in your bathroom. You just got to put them in the freaking hamper. Don't hoard them in your bathroom, like a weirdo, like it's shoved in the closet, like, so they can just like get all gross and like mildewy, <laughs> like just put them in the hamper. We, we talked about this on my show a couple of weeks ago and my co-host got on me because I use the same towel for like a week or two. And she said that was gross, but I feel like you don't need to use any towel all the time. That is such a boy thing to say. That is <laughs> absolutely, that is the dude thing, 100%. <laughs> when we moved out, we only ever had the one towel we stole from a hotel room. And we were like, this is all we have right now. This is how we dry right. ourselves. But like grown up Megan has multiple towels and, you know, I switch them up every few showers. <laughs> hey, congratulations. You, by the way, were on the same side as my audience on that one. They kind of thought I was disgusting. When did you, speaking of living with Mitchell, when did you decide which phase of Megan was it that moved to Nashville that decided this is the time that I'm going to go chase my dream and move? Um, you know, I think it was, so, I mean, I've been in Nashville for four years now and I, I can remember the moment, you know, I was, um, I was on tour with Tom Cochran actually. And I was, I was kind of getting to a point, it was like sort of within that first year of me signing my record deal and things were really starting to take off. And I was just, I was so busy. Sorry, my dogs are wrestling in the background. Okay. Guys, quit. Um, and I, I just was getting to a point where I was, if I wasn't on the road playing, then I was in Nashville and I was writing and, you know, I was barely home ever. And it was getting to a place where 
when I was on the road or when I was in Nashville writing, like I felt like myself and I felt like I was my best self. I loved, I, I mean, I love my job. I'm passionate about what I do and I want to do it all the time. And when I would go back home, it felt like I was trying to like shift gears. I'm sorry, guys. I ow. love this so much. It's so cute. Ow. Hold on. <laughs> We're not doing this here. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's a delicate balance because if I put them out there, then they'll whine at the door so they can be in here, but then they're in here and they're having a wrestling match in the background. My wife's got my daughter upstairs for that exact reason. She'd yeah. be pounding on this door behind me and if she wasn't yeah. upstairs being distracted. If, if Mitchell was here, I'd make him occupy them, but he's not here. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I just, you know, I just got to a place where like when I would go home, I just almost felt out of place. Like, you know, I had my friends and I loved them, but like they didn't understand and they didn't relate to like what my life was now outside of being at home and you yeah. know we would hunt and fish and like drink and do our normal things that we would do but I found myself just like wanting to be around music all the time I wanted to be on the road and I wanted to be creative you know and especially the deeper I got into the songwriting aspect like I wanted to be immersed in it all the time I wanted to be surrounded by other musicians and other writers and people you know, that were inspiring me. And I felt like uninspired. Like I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't motivated and I wasn't working as much as I needed to on my craft when I was home. And, you know, my, my relationship was coming to an end and, you know, it was, it was a really, really tough decision to make. Cause it was actually the first person I ever broke up with that was a really great person that it just wasn't right. You know, usually I was breaking up with someone because they were an asshole. <laughs> but, Super easy. It's like, see you later. You're the worst. It's like, you yeah. suck. So I'm gone. Bye. Yeah. And that wasn't the case with, with him. It just wasn't, it just wasn't the right thing, you know, but I just, I remember being on tour and I was like trying to figure out, cause I had been living with him. So I was like, okay, I got to figure out where I'm going to live when I get back from this tour. And then I kind of was like, why, why would I even stay? Like, what, what is there here for me? And I thought about Nashville and, you know, being there and writing and, and being immersed in that music. And I just felt like it was just time for a new chapter. And it was a big, it was a big step. I made the decision really quickly. I mean, I literally came off tour and within 24 hours had packed up my truck in a U-Haul and drove down to Nashville and, and started my life there. And it was- But I bet you along your drive, you, you started feeling more and more free. Like the weight was yes. almost falling off the truck behind you. Totally. And, and so my, my buddy, Oliver, he's my, one of my guitar players in my band, we've been best friends and playing in bands together since we were like 15. And he made the, he made the trip with me and we had a lot of really good talks and he was just like, I mean, he's known me for so long and, you know, he was on the tour with me and he was like, and I was kind of freaking out. I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And he was like, Megan, this is absolutely what you should do. He's like, I you always need the like, one person to say yes. Yeah. And, Cause it and, helps just one little bit. And well, and I remember the first weekend, so he stayed with me for a few days, helped me, you know, get set up and unpack and stuff. And, and actually Jessica Mitchell was in town at the time too. So I had a few friends, which was great. And then the first weekend I was there, like after all of her, and uh, I went to the, I was like kind of having a moment. I felt super lonely and freaked out about what I had just done. I remember I called my dad and I'm like sobbing. I'm like, I made a huge mistake. Dad. What am I doing? And he was like, Hey, he's like, cause it was Easter too. So like, I was used to like being with my family and he was like, look, it's like, it's okay. It's like, you got this. He's like, I'm really yeah. proud of you. What you did was really brave. And it was a big deal. And he said, but he's like, he's like, look, I've never worried about you. He's like, you have always been the independent go get it kid. And he's like, and that's what you're going to do. And he's like, and anything that's worth it is always going to be scary at first but this is absolutely what you need to do. And he said, and you made the move and now you got to see it through. You got this. So I love that we're almost at that full circle moment because that was Easter like four years ago. And here we are yep. talking about this now. That's so cool. You yeah. mentioned family. I got time for one more question for you. And I always yeah. just love talking to you. We're doing this one thing that on our show, we call a one call debate. You mentioned family. Today's debate, you get to pick a side. What would you rather do with family? Play a board game or play a card game? Oh, uh, card game. We, we've always, we play Euchre. That's like our go-to game is, uh, at the cottage. And my dad and I are the dream team and we rock <laughs> at Euchre. So now do you guys smack talk the other teams? Is there, is there tension oh, yeah. that builds? Oh, absolutely. Like tables have been flipped. Like it's, it's, it's a big deal. Almost as we like, we've also played Monopoly. Monopoly gets pretty heated as well. So <laughs> I love it. 
Hey, we're going to spin the new, the new single on the show today. Thank you so much for your time. And when you awesome. can travel, we're, we're both going to figure out our three woods, okay? Out on the golf course. Together. Oh, my gosh. I, something's got to give me, dude. It's, <laughs> it's, it's either I got to figure it out or it's going in the water one of these days. because Snap over the knee. It, yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> awesome, buddy. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Always great talking to you. Thank you.